And a cold good morning to you, Stanton. This is Fist25 coming at you from Outpost 54 on Microtech, where we have a beautiful sunrise coming up. And we're going to talk about the Anvil Terrapin today. So as I make my way down to the ship, this ship is unique. I want it to be really cool. But it's not. <laughs> I know there's some people out there that absolutely love their Terrapins. Uh, I am not one of those people. Um, maybe those of you from Maryland really love your Terrapin. Um, anyway, it is a kind of a scout uh, ship. Long range reconnaissance support type of ship. It is a military vessel from the UEE Navy and uh, just I really, I kind of want to like it, but I don't. Uh, for a single player ship that just has one bed and, and kind of just basic functionality, no cargo, no real weapons, uh, it's just not really my cup of tea, but maybe you'll like it. I don't know. Let's take a look at the ship. We are standing near the front of the ship. Um, it kind of has a real broad shoulders, right? Reminds me of kind of like a football linebacker. Uh, that is the cockpit at the top there. Uh, you can see it has four landing gear struts. As we come around to the starboard side of the ship, you can see that there's two engines on the starboard side. Those engines are VTOL, and uh, I do like how the engines work. Uh, they seem to work really well. I'm not sure why that hatch is open on the top of the ship, maybe to provide more surface area for lift uh, and atmospheric flying. I'm not sure. I know this ship is very heavily armored. It is one of the most armored ships in the UEE, and that's why the Navy has a contract to buy the ship. It's got two big rudders at the backside. Um, funnily and funny enough, they both have red lighting on them instead of uh, green and red. Um, so they are, I guess, officially tail lights uh, or maybe brake lights. <laughs> I don't know. Here's the back of the ship. Uh, again, looks looks very armored. Uh, I believe Terrapin is Latin for turtle or something like that. Um, and this ship is very, when it's when everything's folded in and it looks very compact, very armored, it should definitely be able to take a hit. Uh, let's walk around the port side here where the entrance also is. Uh, turning on my light doesn't do anything. But this is the entrance over here. We'll get in the ship in just a minute, but I just want to give you a profile of the ship from left to right, bow to stern. Here's our only two weapons on the ship. I believe there's size two attritions on here. And uh, yeah, that's the ship. So let's uh, go ahead and hop in this baby and uh, we will, now my light wants to work. We'll take a little tour. So the ramp opens up nice. It is a single player ramp. Uh, we can see there's some kind of a like a bay door lock mechanism. So it's, it's, that's nice detail. When we walk inside, we initially see what is the scanner seat. And uh, we can see the bed in the back corner. Uh, this G49 here, this is the area just to the left of it is the toilet. And we see up in front, that is the cockpit section. So let's close our door. Let's uh, let's go ahead and take off in this ship, and then we will get a closer look around the inside and the outside as we get up over Microtech. So the ship's already fired up, because um, I had to actually come here to land here. So switch myself into gimbal mode. 
let's uh, start our engines from the outside. As you can see our engines have lit off. They are ready to go. Those are those are the four engines. There's nothing in the back as far as I'm aware of. There's a big radar dish on the top, and that's what this ship is all about. Although I don't think the functionality is quite there for it yet. So let's think of it has quite a bit of vertical thrust. Kind of has a nice sound to it as well. As we yaw uh, to our right. Well, this is our, I'm going to set the cruise control. This is pretty much our forward speed with the gear down and the VTOL down. Let's put our gear up. That comes up nice. Those flaps close. Uh, the top hatches close. I believe there was a hatch on the on the front up by the cockpit as well. Uh, that does look like there's an engine. So there's engines in the back there as well. So I guess a total of six engines. Oh, it's starting to get windy here at Microtech. Let's uh, put our VTOL up. We should probably gain quite a bit of speed. So that's a nice look at transition there. I kind of like it. It looks, it looks tough. It looks good. I'm not sure why those rudders stick up so much. Uh, that kind of looks weird. It has, looks like some, some contrails coming out from the back. Better make sure we don't get too low here. Fly away from the sun. Let's go inside the cockpit here. We'll just make sure we're catching a little bit of altitude because we're gonna hop out of the ship. We're out of the excuse me, not out of the ship, but out of the uh, the seat here, and uh, we'll go over the cockpit here as soon as we're done. Looking at the, the back end, you saw those rain effects on the windshield. That looks really nice. Okay, so now we're out of the seat. We can see there's some maintenance areas around the ship. Uh, maintenance access, it says. That's a weird look because we don't really have glass on the, the top there, I guess. It's, at least we can't see through it. But we're seeing the uh, water, so that's interesting. Uh, see there, yeah, there's nothing we can really interact with here. As we go down some steps, there's some component housing we can open. I believe that's a cooler. Uh, there is a shield generator right here. It's one of our shield generators. Management CPU, we can't get in that yet. Over here is a gravity generator, which is locked. We can't get in there. Um, and then another cooler. That's some logo work. Coming in the back area, we can see there is a uh, looks like a panel to put weapons or armor, stuff like that. Definitely another suit. Doesn't look like any of it's interactable right now. Um, there is a bed back here with, uh, you know, there's nothing super fancy about it. It's just a bed. Uh, you can log off in space. That is a life support. That's what that is. And it's locked. Obviously, we can open our door right here. We can see we're flying high above Microtech. Maybe this would be a good parachute type ship. Uh, back here, there's a radar cabinet that's locked. A power plant you can open. There's one of our power plants. And uh, maybe most people don't know this, but there is a full toilet here. Uh, so we can take our space dumps. And uh, there's a little sink and a, and a shower. Um, I, I wouldn't imagine people do a lot of long-range travel in this, but it does have uh, quite a bit of quantum fuel, so I don't even use an atlas in here. Let's hop into the support station, which I, I believe right now I was playing around with it earlier. It doesn't really have a function uh, as we get inside of it. I already have it powered up, but uh, there's two buttons here. Power off. I want to see the top of the ship here. Let's see that big radar dish. Oh, what is that sound? That big radar dish, I would think, would move as we are moving our... You know, as we're moving around in there, but... Uh, it doesn't, it looks like. So 
let's go ahead and power this on. Um, so we can move this around, but I don't think it, yeah, it doesn't move anything or do anything really. So there's nothing else, there's not, there's not like there's a remote throw it in here, so we can always power off, exit, power on. Um, there's a couple panels here that uh, don't actually do anything, like you can click buttons, but they won't do anything. So there's our support seat. Should be for a scanning function, but right now it doesn't work. Let's head on back into the cockpit. Okay, maybe we went a little too high, huh? We should come down a little bit. Just level out our flight. I'm gonna go SCM for this. SEM for this aircraft is 151 meters a second. Uh, it's, the rate's probably something like 150. But we're going to take a look around the panels here. Uh, we can see we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight multi purpose displays, plus our warning panel and our uh, HUD and map right in front of us. A uh, very anvil ish look. We've got our markings. We Definitely don't have any view out of the top. So we have three panels to look out of. Still from our kind of shape to uh, like a little easy J or an L. And it's not a whole lot of view, although from this point of view right here, we can see. Uh, I just can't, you know, it's not made to be a fighter. Uh, so we have our shields, we have target information, uh, our other shield display, our power, our comms, another shield display, another power, and uh, looks like a heat display. So let's uh, let's move out into space here. Gain some altitude, gain some throttle. We'll take a look at our ship as we leave the Microtech. Atmosphere. It does have some some nice contrails or some engine exhaust coming from the back. Kind of like that. There's our two guns, our two attrition tubes. Uh, other than that, I, I'm just not sure what the point of releasing the ship was. It doesn't really have any other gameplay. Like as we get to space, we're gonna kind of look at its roll rate and its jaw ray and all that stuff, but well, I don't think it's going to be a very capable dogfighter, to be perfectly honest with you. Let's go ahead and quantum out to an OM marker if we can find one. I and it's instant stop of the quantum drive, which I really like. Engines online. Uh, there's no slowdown or anything involved in that. It's just an instant stop. So that makes it really nice. You can see we're, we are a little ways from good old Microtech there. Let's see what the ship looks like in space a little bit better. So it's got the, the light gray and, and red markings. That is Anvil's trademark. Happen to like the paint scheme. It does kind of look like a little bit of a turtle, right? Uh, it, it's not bad. It looks pretty good. That's actually a really cool screenshot right there. All right, so let's keep taking a look at the ship. Look at the bottom side, the sunlight. Uh, you can see we have. It's very armored. Uh, what I see is a lot of armor, a lot of protection on this ship, and. Uh, we're going to test that out. We are going to go dogfighting in this, and we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, no promises. So, uh, with a little bit about the Terrapin, the Anvil U4A-3 Terrapin Deep Space Armored Scout Ship, utilized by the United Empire of Earth Navy, 
Outfitted with sensitive long-range scanners, it is used for long-duration reconnaissance and leg patrol missions where crew members might need to be separated from support facilities for weeks at a time. The spacecraft is encased with heavy armor and an oversized shield generator that allows it to survive skirmishes with light rating craft and extreme environment. So, uh, I know that, uh, like I said, the ship has a lot of armor in it. And uh, let's let's we'll see how it does in a fight. It's not going to be very offensive, but defensive, sure. Let's check its max speed here. What Urkel calls its uh, afterburner speed, and you can see it's uh, one thousand two hundred and three four meters a second. That's actually pretty quick for. Uh, any ship. So, I'm pretty impressed by that. You know, I don't use the Terrapin very often, so it is what it is here. Uh, it has, uh, as far as weapons go, like I said, it has a couple of Trisha 2s on it. Uh, they are on a bespoke turret that you cannot uh, change out the size of the weapon. Uh, so they are always gimbaled, so you might as well always have gimbals on, which is kind of nice. Uh, especially if you're going to have lower powered weapons. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fly over to Port Fressler and then I'm going to go get us into trouble. Try to find some kind of mission we can find in or something like that. You know, as, as we as we uh, make our way to Port Fressler, we'll talk a little bit more about what you can do on this ship. So, obviously, you could do some, some light dogfighting. Uh, maybe with the armor, you could do some really good dogfighting. I don't know. We'll, we'll see how much damage we take. Uh, look at Fortress around there, just kind of hanging out. With the ship being so armored, you know, maybe we could go longer durations on, on some of the bounty hunting. We'll have to test it out. You... There is no storage on this ship, so you're not going to be doing any type of cargo running. You're not going to be doing any type of mining or anything like that. Um, really, long-range scanning is not really a thing in the game right now, and that scanning station really doesn't do anything. It can't do any type of data running, which also is in a game in 312. So what can you do on this ship? You can do box missions. Uh, you can grab some boxes. There's definitely room in the back to put them in there, so you can definitely do that. You can haul your friends around. Um, you can... Maybe make it some kind of a uh, of a miniature dropship. If that kind of gameplay interests you, you know they can file out that door, uh, something like that. Uh, it's pretty armored, so maybe it comes in, and takes takes some good hits when you let people out. Other than that, I'm just not sure what, what else you can do on the ship. So we're gonna pull into Port Tressler. We're gonna get some gas. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and show the landing, just so we can get another picture of the VTOL if I don't crash here. And then uh, we'll get our gas, we'll come out, we'll do it like a roll check, a yaw check, and uh, we'll, we'll go from there. So I'm going to go ahead and drop my landing gear, see those hatches opening up. I'm not sure why, but I kind of like it. We will rotate our VTOL. Come in for a nice, easy landing. It's nice that we have, like, light on this one pad, so... It's pretty fancy. Always deceptive here when you are in the back. It always seems like you're a little bit too far. Seems like you're forward enough, but you're really not. And we will land here on Port Fessler. Landing complete. No, it doesn't say. I will, buddy. Get some gas. I do have a different quantum engine in this. Uh, I believe I have the drift installed. Uh, because it has a little bit bigger of a quantum tank, I can go with a little bit more powerful civilian engine than my standard Atlas. The Atlas would definitely be more efficient. But... Uh, I basically did I did an engine that could go from Port Olisar to Microtech in one jump 
and it's the fastest that can do it in one jump without stopping for gas. Uh, and it just happens to be that civilian drive. So we're gonna take off again. A lot of vertical thrust here. We'll put our landing gear and landing our... Gear. Thank you. Landing gear up, we're gonna head out into space. Here's some afterburner. Pretty good afterburner. Thank you. So, I didn't overheat at all in that exchange. Now this ship has three coolers on it, so that probably helps as far as uh, the afterburner goes. Uh, it has a size two shields, so that's probably gonna help uh, in any type of fight or anything like that. So we're gonna go ahead and drop our speed down now that we're clear of Port Fressler. Let's see how, how the retro thrusters go. This is without any assist or speed brake. I'm gonna hit the brakes now. Pretty good, I'm gonna hit afterburner. Pretty good, and I didn't hear overheat one time, so I like that. So let's go ahead and check out our roll right here. Not too bad. It's actually pretty good. Uh, it's not quite as fast as a fighter, but it's, it's definitely faster than what I anticipated. Let's check our yaw rate. Our yaw rate is slow. Uh, it's not horrible for this size of a ship or what the ship's purpose is but it's definitely not as fast as I would love and our pitch rate here it's slower than the yaw rate uh, it's actually pretty significantly slow so it's easy to recover though so that was that's pretty nice but it's fast enough to be able to maneuver okay but the roll rate is actually really really good for this for the ship so I'm going to go ahead and uh, go try to find some kind of a mission to do, and we'll get back to you as soon as I'm over there. All right, everybody, I'm, I went ahead and grabbed my sticks here. We have taken the 890 jump mission, and I'm really just doing it to fight the two Cutlass Blacks that are out here. Uh, we'll see how well this ship does against them. Hopefully this thing spawns in, because uh, I haven't seen any 890 jumps. There it is. Okay, so let's take our first game. Remember, we don't have any missiles here. All we have is our, our two uh, size two punts. A lot of shield. We're taking a lot of hits on the shields. And they seem to be handling them really well. The, one nice thing about having a slower ship, turning slower than your opponent, yeah, you're going to take more hits, but you're going to be on target more because you do turn slower. So you're kind of always going to have them, have them there, unless they're. If that ship is really fast, then sometimes uh, you know you're never going to be able to target them because you won't be able to turn fast enough. Let's see about dodging the ship a little bit. Okay, it's getting closer. Okay, so he's hit me pretty good. But still not through the shields. I mean, shields, 86, 90. No real damage to the armor. All right, let's go ahead and start shooting over here. Let our gimbals do our work. I think if this ship was able to be modified to have some missiles, it would be it'd be pretty pretty heavy uh, to have a battle. I, I would like to take this in battle more often. Maybe if there that that scanner seat could also be a remote turret or something like that. That'd be a cool mod to have. Seems like our hits aren't actually hitting them, but I know they are, because I can see his damage. Even though I'm gimbal, I'm still trying to get that center reticle onto the pimp just to help our gimbals. And I'm not doing any type of fancy flying. I'm really, I'm just kind of jousting him. Um, we blew him up with no issues. Uh, we got a couple grand for that. Makes me wonder if I should go out and uh, help this 890 jump. This is a fun mission uh, if you like first person shooting. Maybe we'll uh, we'll take it, we'll check it out, we'll see uh, if 
if I do well, I might show it to you. If I do horrible, I'll probably just skip it. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll go ahead and load up onto the 890 and uh, avoid inflicting friendly fire casualties. I will try. Knowing that my door is on the left side, I'll just line up to the left. So, you know, as we leave the 890 jump here, the dust, turn my lights on, you can see I took a uh, Aegis Avenger Stalker to get here, which I'll have to claim. Is my ship in VTOL? It is, isn't it? That's weird, because I did not leave it in VTOL, I don't think. Um, Anyway, I, I would destroy my old ship, but I can't because I think I'll get a cramp stat if I do in 312, but that's okay. Uh, so to show you, it handled itself pretty well in a dogfight, and I, I'm pretty impressed with it. Uh, as far as taking hits, we didn't take any any type of serious damage. Uh, we can go see what our, what our repair bill is going to be. Uh, that's probably a good idea. Let's find good old Port Dressler here. So, you know, it, it, if you're watching this video and you haven't subscribed yet, I would really appreciate uh, a subscribe, uh, even a like, some something. <laughs> uh, these videos do take time to make. Uh, they take you know energy. They take effort. And uh, while they're free to you on YouTube, you know, we're hoping to make more of these videos. We want to build a, a community uh, enough on this channel. So if we get a thousand subscribers and enough watch hours, that we'll get monetized. And our plan is to uh, start doing ship giveaways on this channel if we can. Uh, we do have an org, the Sons of Valhalla, uh, along with the Cobra Force, which we're affiliated with. And we just oh, we better not have anything here. And, you know, we're looking not necessarily to make money for ourselves. Uh, even though it does take time and effort to make these, but really we want to give back to the community. Um, I enjoy making these ship guides and ship reviews. Uh, some people not so much, but that's fine. I'd like to do more uh, like daily news of Star Citizen and my thoughts and opinions because, you know, I, I'm not beholden to anybody. And if CIG never decides to give us a ship or anything like that in the future, that's fine with me. Uh, I really don't care. But it would be nice to give back to the community of viewers. That That is the whole goal here. And hopefully one that, you know, sooner rather than later we can obtain. Let's go ahead and check out this repair bill. Okay, so 193 off of UEC. You saw we took some good hits from those laser repeaters, uh, with the store, or the, the scatter guns, laser scatter guns, and, uh, it really didn't penetrate any armor. It really, never really got through more than 10% of the shields. So, you know, food for thought. Uh, I think the ship is, it, it's a cool ship. I, like I said, I really want to love it, but it just, uh, <laughs> the gameplay's not there for you yet, and that's okay. So, uh, now we're going to go ahead and transition over to Urkel.Games and well, we're probably over to, there's a brochure for this, and I believe there's a video for it, and we're going to head to that. So, stick around. Thanks for watching. Okay, everybody, so here we are uh, at Games, and I'm going to go ahead and bring up the Anvil Terrapin. Um, we'll go over its stock stats real quick. Its role is a pathfinder, its career is a support ship, uh, ship size is two, the whole HP just under 14,000. Uh, dimensions, actually it's smaller than a Hornet, um, as far as length and width, that's the exact same height, uh, but the volume and the weight is way more. The Hornet's mass is like 74,000 kilograms. The Terrapin's mass compared to the Hornet is 166 thousand eight hundred and fifty kilograms so uh over twice as big so it's much more bulkier and uh, that makes sense it's got a lot more armor a lot more armor plating 
Uh, it's regular SCM speed, 157 meters a second. It's maximum speed, 1,204 meters a second. And just like in the video, it's pitch and yaw are both 40 degrees a second. And they were both very uh, slow, <laughs> not not very fast. Um, but like I mentioned, its roll rate is very respectable at 135 degrees a second. And that may be where the uh, thrusters are positioned. Um, but it, it rolls very well. It just does not yaw very well. It doesn't pitch very well. And, you know, it makes sense with a ship of its volume. Uh, it's hydrogen capacity 455,000 liters, quantum fuel capacity 950. Now, there's a lot of stuff on here that's size one, and but it does have a, a bigger fuel tank than uh, most uh, smaller ships. So it can go further, which makes sense. It should be a long range reconnaissance ship. We can see that with stock components, its DPS is 747. Uh, DPS, uh, the shields are 21,876, and the power is just under half at 2537, uh, and the coolers are right around half, capacity 443 out of 840, and its EM signature is 17,893, which is fairly high. So first things first, let's uh, change out the weapons. Uh, it's a nose 2 size 2 uh, bespoke gimbaled turret which means we can't change any of that. We have to use size two. So we're going to pick up attrition twos. Our DPS is going to go from 747 up to 822. So, um, you know, close, it's about 80 DPS more when we're at, when we're at heat, 700 degrees. Uh, I think that's pretty significant. Um, as you saw, I killed targets fairly easily with it. You know, those cutty blacks, it didn't take too much. I didn't take hardly any damage when they were shooting me, so... That's that's very good. Um, as far as the shields go, our stock shields are at 21,876. So right, right at 22,000. Uh, it is a size 2 shield. So I'm going to go ahead and upgrade this to a rampart. And now our shields are at 32,000. So a, pr a pretty sizable upgrade there. Uh, if, you, if you really love this ship and you have a spare super online around, throw that on there. It'll have even more shields. And you'll be almost impervious to ballistics. Our power plants right now, our power uh, with those increased shields is over half. Uh, so we want to get it to half or lower. We're at 4,000 out of a capacity of just about 6,000. We increase our power plant, which is a size two to a JS 400. And now our, our capacity is 10,600. And so we're still using 4,000 power, but now we're under half, or, which is plenty of extra power to go around. Um, the ship is unique because the way it, the armor is, it doesn't vent heat like it should. And so heat builds up in it. And uh, there's a, an article about that on uh, Star Citizen Tools. Let's talk about the cooling mechanism. Due to the Terrapin's thick armor, the ship has insufficient capacity to vent its heat. To vent this excess heat, the armor panels can be retracted. A mechanic that has been described as to come up for air, just like a turtle comes up for air. So I think that's pretty neat. Um, but if we see, we have three size one coolers in this ship, which is it's going to provide us a ton of cooling. Uh, our right now it comes with a military grade bees, which are pretty good polars, uh, giving us a, a capacity of 840. Uh, we're going to go ahead and change all those over to ultra flows. Why not have the most cooling we can get? And now our cooling capacity is 1,320. So a significant bump there. Uh, so we are well under half. We're, we're closer to a third of our cooling capacity. Um, the difference with this guy, with my with my normal loadout for smaller ships, the quantum drive. So the quantum drive in this ship stock is an EOS. Uh, it's a, a civilian grade C. It can make a jump from PO to Microtech in nine minutes, 31 seconds. Normally, I would say throw an Atlas in there. And while you can throw an Atlas in there, uh, the jump from PO to Microtech uh, is 8 minutes, 55 seconds. But because the ship has quantum fuel, I started more than normal. I was started lo looking around at the, some of the military drives, right? The VK-00, you can't make the jump to Microtech without gas, but you could certainly go from PO to Hurston in four minutes. Uh, that's fast. You could go with the Class B drive military and still 
make these jumps in the Class C drive, the Beacon. You can you can't make it to Microtech with that. But if you uh, also with the Stealth drives, the Spectre, you can't make a jump one jump from Pio to Microtech or the Zephyr. But the Class C Stealth drive, Drift. At 171,318 kilometers a second, you can just make the jump from Port Alisar to Microtech 8 minutes and 12 seconds with that drive. Um, in comparison, that's 171,000 kilometers a second. The Atlas is 151,000 kilometers a second. So the drift is going to use more uh, quantum fuel, but you are going to get there faster. Um 855 for the Atlas and the drift is 812. So, I mean, if you care about those 40 seconds, cool, then use the drift. It's faster. You'll also get to Hurst in an art court faster as well. You can also go with the burst, the rush, the voyage, the flood, or go back to the tried and true Atlas if you want to probably be the most efficient. It is up to you. Uh, we can't change any radars or thrusters, and there are no paints for the Terrapin. So, um, let me click on our display button here. Oh, it doesn't want to do it for us. Okay, well, th this is the loadout for the Terrapin. We are going to move our uh, non-stock items into the cart. So to fully upgrade the Terrapin with my preferred loadout, Rampart Shield, a single, JS400 Power Plant, three Ultra Flow coolers, a Drift Quantum Drive, two Attrition, two Repeaters, and we're going to get them all at New Babbage because it's one-stop shopping. Um, except for, oh, you can't. The Drift, you can get a Port All-Star just like the Atlas. Um, and you have to get the Attritions at Lorville. So the total is 226,614 Alpha UBC to upgrade the Terrapin to its, what I consider the, its best loadout. Um, that's actually not that expensive. Um, you can make that easily in a day, if, if not less. You could, if, if you have a Caterpillar and you can do a full load of Laronite, that's, you'll make more in profit than this and the entire upgrade to the Terrapin. So, uh, you know, it depends on your setup, but pretty easy to upgrade the Terrapin. Um, when it is upgraded, I want to point out that the EM signature is way higher at 59,521. Uh, that's a lot. Now, the Terrafin is available at Astro Armada in Area 18 for 2.5 million Alpha UEC. And now we're going to switch over to the RSI webpage and look at what that has to offer. So we're looking at the Terrapin um, on the RSI website. Uh, we've already gone over the the tagline here for the Terrapin. Um, there are actually some live buying options for the ship right now. Uh, let's let's check out the pictures if we can. They look they look pretty nice. Uh, there's a cross section of the Terrapin. It looks bigger in this picture than what it really is. Uh, it's as you saw in the video, it's really just a scanner seat and a pilot seat. There's not much in there. Uh, but there are room for boxes for a box mission. So um, we look at its specs. We've already went over that. And Urkel, uh, the the crew really for the Terrapin is one person. Um, I don't think these specs on the website are actually up to date. I think because uh, Urkel pulls from the game files, I think it's more accurate. So let's look at buying options for the Terrapin. If you were to buy the UBE Exploration 2950 package, which includes things like the Carrick, um, Ices, the Drink Dragonfly, the Tumbrel Cyclone, a Freelancer, 20 grand, a Carrick Plushie, all kinds of this other stuff, LTI, uh, for $1,100, you will also get a Terrapin um, for there's other packages, the Escort Pack, the Exploration Mega Pack, and the Convoy Pack, which is $3,500. So all these packages that the Terrapin are in are all over $1,000. So if you have that kind of scratch laying around, yeah, go buy the Terrapin. Other than that, we're going to go on over to the brochure. Stay tuned.
Okay, everybody. So we are at the Anvil Terrapin brochure page. Um, this is kind of neat. It's kind of blueprint-like. It looks like it's torn paper. Uh, the Armor of Reconnaissance Vehicle, the Terrapin. It's the Test Pilot Manual. Uh, going to the second page. Confidential information. This document contains technical data whose export is restricted under the Intelligence and Secrets Act. Violations. These export laws are subject to severe criminal penalties. Signed by Lieutenant Commander Kristen Arroway. Maybe we will meet her in Squadron 42. Who knows? Um, there are no notes. There are some notes on this page of the Terrapin. It looks like some kind of formulas or, or something. Some kind of math. I don't know. Um, cool picture of the Terrapin and uh, getting it ready on the uh, some kind of ship. I'm assuming some kind of hangar. Uh, getting it ready to take off. Uh, hello, pilot. We want to congratulate you for joining our ship assessment review team. Your insight and experience flying the prototype ship will be invaluable for High Command to make an informed decision whether they should include the ship in the UEE's military forces. While working on this project, we ask you to adhere to a few simple rules. First, please refrain from divulging any details about the ship, tests, and conversations telling to anyone, including other military personnel, family, friends, etc., ex outside the project. Second, be honest. All of our candidates have been thoroughly vetted for their expertise and communication skills. There are no right or wrong answers, so please give us your honest feedback while describing your experience flying the prototype. Welcome aboard, Vice Admiral Galen Wishaw, Wishaw, UEE Navy Research and Development Division, Tamerlane MacArthur Killian System. Um, so, uh, in some of the lore here for the Terrapin, it was uh, this Admiral, and uh, this is his project uh, for a long range heavily armored scout reconnaissance vehicle. So now we see the cutaway cross section of the Anvil Terrapin um, with the big scanning dish on top. You know, again, it looks dis deceiving because it looks bigger than what it is. It's it's not this big. It, it is small. When you when you have been inside the ship and you look at the ship, you can go, OK, this is pretty small. And it is. Um, so it's going to all go all about know your enemy, uh, some CIG propaganda, really cool stuff, uh, having the brochure and, um, having that information at your fingertips. There's a picture of a Terrapin outside of a window, uh, with some ships firing on it. You like a Gladius firing on a Terrapin. Um, Operation Lifeline talks about how to grade it and hand, uh, the hand handling general precision target acquisition with scanning um, it's made to basically kind of hide and then find a target communicate it almost like a very heavily armored AWACS but then with my loadout you know you'll see the Terrapin coming a mile away um, there's different operations here for the Terrapin and now we get to a basic layout of it the scanner the engines um, who did all the engineering on this? Uh, the Terrapin was made at the plant at Nova Kiev in Terra. And then it talks about the, the cooling features, which we already talked about for the Terrapin. Um, the model year is 2796, so it's actually a fairly old ship. Um, this was the prototype drawing, so this, this drawing is... Wow, really old, like 150 some years old. Um, it was cutting edge at the time, but it's not cutting edge anymore. Uh, more stuff about the Terrapin, the front, the back, the top, the bottom view, uh, the pilot, the scanner seat, uh, where the life support, the jump drive is. We, we, we looked at all these components. Uh, the fuel tanks, you can see where the fuel tanks are, number seven. Um, there's just one fuel tank, which is... Oh, no, there's two. Seven and ten in the fuel tanks. And they basically flank the head inside the ship. Um, there's a couple of maintenance call -out. Okay, so the cooler, the avionics unit, the power plant. And then a nice cool poster saying, Make a stand. And defend the Empire, because those are Van Duel ships. Um, and this is property of the UE Naval Archives, etc., etc. Um... And that's it for the brochure. So we're gonna hop on over to the video of the Terrapin.
So a couple things about that video before we let go. Uh, one, the guy jumped straight into quantum from a hangar, uh, which <laughs> I didn't know that was quite possible. Uh, two, when the ship came out, um, the pilot sitting in the pilot seat was able to use that long range scanner without having to get out and go into the scanner seat. Um, that kind of negates the purpose of having the scanner seat. Um, otherwise, why wouldn't you have a crew of two in the Terrapin? It looks like you have room for like a bunk bed. You can have a person running the scanner and one person being the pilot. What would also be cool is to have like a remote turret or something that that person could operate on the bottom of the ship, something like that. Um, the last thing that kind of irked me about it was on the on the Terrapin is the vectored thrust. If you saw the VTOL engines, they actually moved uh, horizontally um, while he was flying around to kind of give him vectored thrust. That would be amazing. And it's stuff we've seen on uh, other ships. Like I think the Freelancer had that originally when it had its VTOL engines, um, which it does not anymore. Uh, I would love to see that on the Terrapin. I would love to see those engines move around so that you can control yourself better. And maybe some actual, you know, like if it was truly stealth, see some kind of a, of a stealth build. Otherwise, those ships would have seen that Terrapin sitting there on the top of the asteroid forever. Um, the, I didn't see him go into any kind of a dark mode or, or, you know, turn the lights off or anything. Like his ship was fully on and EM signatures good enough for those <laughs> the ships were close enough they would have saw him. So I don't know. Um, it was a cool video. I'll tell you that. I, you know, it gets me pumped up about the ship, but then you fly the ship and I'm kind of like, eh. I think I would maybe say that I like the Gladiator more than I like the Terrapin, at least right now. And I hate the Gladiator, which means I also hate the Terrapin. So, sorry, Terrapin. I want to like you, but until you get more features, uh, it's just not going to happen. Until that reconnaissance gameplay comes in, the scout gameplay. So, with that... I think we'll move on over to our third person uh, fighting in the Terrapin, uh, some third person views, and then we'll uh, we'll shake on out of here with the end of the video. Thanks a lot, guys. <laughs> guys that's it for the terrapin video let me know what your thoughts are on the terrapin here um it's an interesting ship very heavily armored uh very low weapon and the function the main function of it really doesn't do anything right now but i feel i still think it's a it's a neat concept of a ship i'm not sure it's worth the price that they're selling to that right now um but I guess I'm glad it's in game. Uh, I wish it really had the use of two people in it. Um, but anyway, what are your thoughts? What are your comments? Please, uh, if you have some time, smash that subscribe button below. And uh, thanks for watching. And we'll see you next time. Good night, Stanton.